City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and so and spin, and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barn green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, welcome back. And today we're going to make some crazy flared pants. Okay, see if you can see those. It's a McCall's pattern, and it has like this yoke and then very, very, very full. Kind of, it's gonna look like a skirt, but it's not a skirt, it's gonna be pants. So they have a shorts version. This I think is supposed to be like a culotte length and then a full length pant. So that's what I'm gonna make. And I am gonna be using this canvas. It's a very lightweight canvas. It's been washed and washed and washed. It used to be curtains in my dining room, but not anymore. I'm gonna be using this, it's 100% cotton. Should be nice. It's not a really like thick, thick canvas, but it's enough that, you know, it's not sheer and it's very soft. So, um, the very first thing though is when you look at this, it is like very long on her and I am much shorter than a model. So I looked and on the very back of it, it says the finish length for these pants is 43 inches and you measure it from the side at your waist to the floor. And when I held up my tape measure, um, what's going to be a good length for me from my waist to down at the floor is 38 inches. So I'm going to be needing to make that adjustment. There's another adjustment I'll make and I'll show you when I get to the patterns. This has a uh, fly, a front fly. It does have pockets. But hopefully it won't be that uh, troublesome, so we never know until we get into it. So let me get started cutting out the pattern. Okay, so I've got my pattern pieces generally cut out. And there's one thing that I am going to be needing to change. Now on my body, my waist is, I'm high-waisted. So basically, usually if I use one of these big four patterns, to a size that should fit me. The crotch is too high, it's extremely uncomfortable, it needs to, to change or I won't wear it, okay? So in order to make it off the go, usually, and I'm gonna assume that this pattern, even though it's a strange thing here, that it's gonna be sized the same. So my waist, at least where the crotch line is, where the center seam is, I'm gonna wanna give myself, just to be safe, because I want these to be loose and comfy, an extra inch, okay? There's several different ways that you can do this, but the easiest one is what I am going to do. And what that is, is, um, well, first of all, there's a yoke and then there's the pant bottom on both the front and the back, okay? So this is gonna be my um, crotch line. This is my back piece here. What I want is my side seam is, I'm gonna try to leave as is because I measured that. I want my side seam to be 38 inches. It's this one I want bigger. So where my notch is, on both the front and the back, I want to make my adjustment below that notch, just below it. So I have this kind of lined up on my grid so that the grain line is going straight down my grid here. So I know that if I put my ruler here and draw this line straight across, okay. Okay, so I drew that line all the way over to this far side right here, okay? So my seam allowance here is 5 eighths also, and I want that to stay the same. Hang on a second. If I put my ruler in half an inch and then draw the line, it'll be more accurate. Okay, so this longer one is 5 eighths of an inch. 
So what I am going to do is cut this open from the center here at the crotch seam all the way over to right here where that 5 8 inch seam allowance is. All right, so I have it cut open there. I think you can see that. So what I'm going to do is take a little scrap of tissue paper that I cut off when I was cutting out my pattern and place it underneath here. And I'm going to tape this bottom edge to that little scrap just to hold it nicely for me for a second here. Okay, so now at this seam allowance line that I drew, I want that to be a space of one inch. So at this seam allowance here, and I know this is probably going to make it a little bit too long, but for this pattern, I'd rather have it too long than not. So now I'm opening this at the seam line, not the outer edge, but at the seam line at half an inch. And I will re-tape re this, okay? So now I have this new piece here. So this will be my back. I'll just cut straight across here and over here remains the same. Now on the bottom, this is the bottom of the back. For the bottom of the back and the bottom of the front, I need to take off five inches. So I'm just gonna mark it with my ruler, draw a line across here like so. And then, I can come back and just trim off those bottom five inches because that is the difference between the finished length on the pattern and the finished length that I want my particular pair to be. So I'm just gonna trim those off and I will do the same thing on the front. So both of them will be the, the same length when we're done. Okay, so this is my front piece now. I've already shortened the bottom of it and I need to work on that crotch adjustment thing up here at the front. And um, on this particular pair of pants, very wide right here, so I'm not gonna have a problem getting into it if I widen my crotch. Sometimes if I do this on a pair of pants that's narrow, um, this is where my fly wants to end up. I actually end up lowering my fly by the amount that I put it in, so which means I need, I need a longer zipper, okay? Um, but I will add whatever I add down here. I will add it to the top of my little fly piece. There are different pants patterns have different fly inserts. Some don't have this, some just have it you know, the, this piece is shaped that way. They're all different, but for this one, it has a separate little piece that you sew on just to the right side. Um, but because of the way that this pattern is so wide down here at the point where my fly is gonna be open, I'm not gonna be extending my zipper, long story short. So I'm gonna cut my fly piece, this little extension, um, the same size as the pattern has and put that aside there and I'm going to be doing the same thing. Now over here there is a pocket. Oh I need to move you over so you can see. Okay so on this side there's this diagonal pocket thing. So I need to make sure that the adjustment I make um, I want it to be either at the bottom of the pocket level or below it. Okay so if this is my So if this is my notch here, okay, um, and I went straight across from there, I would be in my pocket and I might have a slightly different angle there. This is so wide, it shouldn't make a difference. If this was a very narrow piece, it would be more obvious. Um, but just to make it so that everything is gonna be good, I'm actually going to place it down here. So my pocket angle will just remain the same. So just like on the other one, I'm drawing a line straight across and where this dot is, that's my seam allowance there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it straight across here up to where that seam allowance is right there. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go get a little piece of paper to put in here. 
So just like last time, I am going to measure one inch at the seam allowance, which is going to put it right about there. Okay, and doing it this way, if say you only needed to add extra in the rear, so you have a super curvilicious rear, and you don't need to add it in the front, well, you only need to do just the rear because those two sides will match up that way and you don't need to do this. Mine, I just need to extend the entire thing. So, so that's fine, but um, yeah. So now I have this over here and I'm just going to kind of split the difference there. So I'm gonna recut this so it comes like this. A nice graduated curve and I am all set and I can cut these pieces out. Okay, so finally ready to get started. Now, my fabric unravels extremely easily, so I am gonna be serging around all of my pieces with my white serger thread. And so the very first part here, well, the first thing is to put interfacing on a couple pieces, but we will put that off for right now, at least I will. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and mark my big front piece, number one, serge all the way around it, and then uh, run a couple rows of gathering stitches in the top. And I am going to be using my heat erasable pens to mark with. There's a few dots I need to mark, and so I am going to punch out all of these and on my curve here, this is a little curve for my fly. I'm actually gonna, yeah, let me punch this a little better. I'm actually gonna punch out a couple little spots halfway through so that it'll help me drawing that line. So, this line here that's at about a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch, that's for sewing a zipper line. That's a fold line for sewing on a zipper in the fly. So I'm gonna mark that. And up at the very top, I'm marking where the top end of this little line is so I can draw that in. And I'm putting a big circle here and a couple little ones as I go. And so I can make this little curve line like that and then this circle here that's a match point i need that so over here on this edge is a, another little dot and this is for uh, matching up a pocket facing i believe now um you can see a lot closer here where I made my adjustment. A lot of times when you do things like this, they want you to also clip on this side of your seam allowance and just leave a little bit, which makes what they call a hinge so you can kind of overlap them. It's not a huge amount, so usually I just kind of like smoosh them together and even it out, but technically that's what you're supposed to do. So when you cut this way, you, you're gonna leave about an eighth of an inch that's still connected, okay? but. That aside, I need to mark that. I am going to be clipping my notches, and when I serge around the edges, I serged with just taking like little spare threads off. I'm not taking big swaths and strips of fabric off, so I should be able to see where these little notches are inside of that stitching. And so that's how I'm gonna basically be marking this entire project. So now that I have those marked, I will take my pattern off, do the same markings on the other side, and then go serge around it. Okay, so at this point, I've got it surged, got it marked, and what I need to do is run my gathering stitches. So, hang on a second, let me draw this little line right here before I forget it. Okay, so this dot here, Okay, just on the outskirts, outside of that fly curve. From this point here, and there's another dot way over here at the seam allowance. Between these two, I am running two rows of gathering stitches, one at half an inch and one at three eighths of an inch seam allowance um, on both of my front pieces. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but I've got two rows of stitching there. So I'm just gonna set these pieces aside for a minute because we have a 
front pocket and a front pocket facing piece. So basically we're going to try to end up with a pocket piece that looks kind of like this, where this is my facing and this edge of my facing is going to match up over here. But we need to finish off this edge first and then just kind of arbitrarily sew it on wherever it's going to line up. I am going to serge around these pieces, but not until after I have this piece sewn onto this piece and then I'll serge around the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I need to punch out this little circle up here, clip the notch here, clip the notch down here, and the notch side is the side that you do not turn under. Okay, so I'm going to color in this one here, and there's another circle down here I'll punch out. Hang on one second. Okay, so at this point I have my two opposite pieces marked, and the side that has the dots is the side that also has a notch right here that you can't see very well. But I need to fold under, and I'm going to say about a quarter inch, the edges here, and just press it so that my dot side is on this side and folded under about a quarter inch on that side. And that is the unnotched side, okay? This side here. I'm going to do that on both of these pieces. Okay, so now I am just, I'm not actually going to mark this yet. I'm going to wait until after I have my facing on it to mark it up. I will. It's not here, so I can use that to line my facing up. Okay, so I need to open this up so I have two opposite pockets right here. So the side that is folded under goes down. So what I need to do is match up my little notch here with the notch on here, but it's basically all the way from the top to the bottom, making sure this outside edge, you know, is 100% on top of each other. I'm going to put a few pins on here just to hold it in place. And then, once I have this one pinned also, I'll go to my sewing machine and I need to, what it looks like they want you to do, is just run a row of top stitching right about here, all the way down. So after I did my edge stitching here, I went ahead and surged around the entire pocket piece, okay? So these edges are now treat it as one and the next instruction is to baste that part but since I serge them together I'm going to skip that because you know that takes care of everything I need. So now I need to pin the pocket to the side front stitch and trim and it looks like we are sewing it beyond the dot. We're matching up the dots but we're going to continue to sew and ease it into the side down there. So get my little gathering threads up here out of the way. This is my center. This is my edge. And I'm going to want to sew these on so that my facing side is down. Okay. So I'm just going to match this up here. Match that up. Okay. So that is matched up. That's going to put it so the very tops line up and down here. So if where my pin went in there is my dot, what I'm going to want to do is basically do a seam allowance and it's going to go off the edge. And the reason I'm drawing this is just so you can see how it's going to taper off. So we're going to sew it like this and then just keep on going until it 
disappears into the side. And this is at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Straight down here, going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, putting it on. So the facing that we sewed is the right side and it's up against the right side of my um, front piece. Alrighty, so now with this stitch done, they want me to turn this to the inside, press it, and top stitch it. So what I'm going to do is actually press this seam allowance open um, first. I'll have a, a lot easier time going ahead and folding it and getting a nice crease. Okay, so on this side what I did is first I pressed it open and you can't tell now but I did press it open first so that then when I turned it it was a lot easier for me to repress it so that it was going to line up right here. Okay so now this one's ready to go ahead and do an edge stitch right down here doing it at about a sixteenth of an inch and or an eighth of an inch you know and this is what the other side looks like that I've already done. So I am accumulating quite a few strings up here and um, because I got all of those gathering threads and everything and I am just going to go ahead and tie a knot with these gathering threads because I've got them sewed into seams and things and I think that if when it comes time to gather them um, I am just going to pull them from the opposite side, from this inside edge over here because, you know, it was getting a little out of hand with all of these. So let me go ahead and finish up this side to match this one. Morning. Welcome to the next day. And um, before we get started on the pants and everything, what I wanted to tell you is really the main fitted part of this whole outfit is the yoke. Okay, because we're going to finish up the pockets and then attach it to the yoke. So what I would suggest is that you do a trial of this on you. So I would put pins or hand base down the center back of this piece and maybe hand baste it or something to the sides of the yoke. You know, and just see how that sits when it wraps around your waist. I actually kind of did this and fitted it on my um, very close to my size dress form. And I think I'm going to be fine. But when you do that, the center front on this is this a little bitty fold line right here. So just, you know, be aware when you're matching it and everything, that's the center front. But I would really suggest that because if you need to make it wider or smaller, these are not that big as far as pieces. So if you have a couple scraps and it's like, oh my gosh, I need it much wider at the bottom, you know, um, you can cut a new one at this point before we do all of the other work. So I would suggest that because then everything else is just kind of gathered to fit that piece. So anyhow, let's get back to finishing these pockets. Okay, so putting those yoke pieces aside for right now, this is what it looks like. I have one little pocket thing there. Now you're going to get your side four piece which is the side front and for me I am going to serge around these pieces but there are two dots that I need to mark and a notch so I'm going to go ahead and punch those out and mark them, clip my notch and then serge around the whole piece on both of these. All right, so this piece, I now have it marked. I've got it surged around the edges and I need to place them. So I'm gonna take one of my pieces and just try to match up this outside edge here the best I can. Sometimes they get stretched out of shape when you're sewing them. Now, this dot down here is going to match, if I stick a pin through here, you can see, that matches up with the point that this diagonal, well here, let me turn it this side. It'll make more sense. Okay, so my dot is actually right here. You can't see it, but it is right there. Right there. And that is the point where this diagonal meets that 5 8 inch seam allowance line right there. Okay, so that, I'm just going to stick a little pin to hold it there. This dot up at the top right here matches up with where this 
edge of this fold is. Okay, so that line matches up with this, or thereabouts. That's the guideline, okay? But what I'm really concerned with at this point is this outside edge. That's what I'm going to be stitching right now. So I'm going to go ahead and pin all around here and sew it right like this, you know, completely free from my thing. Just sew it like this at 5 8 inch seam allowance on both sides. Okay, so I've got this sewed here, okay? And now I need to just base the side in place. And I went ahead and just remarked where this little dot is so that we can see it from this side easily. So I'm matching up that dot there. And I need to base the side right here. So I'm just gonna stick a pin in there just to hold it. I'm going to be basting this um, with by hand because I want to be able to pull it out very easily if I need to. Um, I'm going to be doing it slightly inside, hopefully, that 5 8 inch seam allowance. Oh my gosh. Um, but there's a lot of, of layers right there, so that was a bit thick. Just to hold it in place all the way to the bottom of my pocket down here. And that is it. And I'm going to do this on both sides. I just do a little back stitch at the end, you know, just enough to hold it in place. I can clip that and that step is done. So these are my big uh, basting stitches, you know. I'm thinking I'm going to be pulling them out, but I did it in a matching thread. So if I don't, it's not a big deal. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is work on my yoke piece for the front. And like everything else, I am going to go ahead and serge around this piece before I actually put my markings on here because after I serge it sometimes, especially when it's on an edge, it gets a little uh, ruffly-ish, not extremely, but a little bit, and I like to press it so it's flat. And when I press it, it erases my mark. So I'm going to go ahead and serge it and press it first. But one of the things I wanted to point out is I just looked and it says that they want you to put a row of e-stitching across the top. But looking ahead, um, I don't think I'm really going to need that too much. I think I'll be able to work in whatever little bit of ease is necessary up here to fit on the waistband by just easing it onto the machine and pinning it strategically the way I usually do. So I'll show you that when I get to that point, but I, for right now, I'm going to omit the e-stitching up here. All right, so I am marking these one at a time because there's a lot going on here. So I've just done this one, and now I'm going to mark this one over here. And these yokes are only a single layer. They are not lined, they are not interfaced, anything like that. And there's going to be a whole lot of, of weight and everything with all of this gatheredness being attached to it. But the pattern calls for a lightweight fabric. So, you know, at this point, we're just going to kind of hope for the best. But you can see I'm marking all of my little circles here. I'm going to clip all my notches. And this line is actually a stitching line. It's only used on one side, but I have a hard time sometimes remembering what side I am dealing with, so I'm going to mark it anyway. This line here I am also going to mark, which is a 3 8 inch seam allowance type line. So I'm just marking that all the way down there. Um, yeah. And I'm going to connect this, and then since it's a stitching line, but it's an odd one, I just, I just connect it with a dotted line because that helps me remember what in the world it is for. And up here, just because they did on here, put a little 5 8 inch down waistline line, I went ahead and drew one there. So now I need to go ahead and get this attached to my pant pieces. All right, so I've got my pants piece here, got it right side up, I'm taking my yoke piece, and I'm just using it so I can look at my markings. And the first thing I'm going to do is match up my center front. This little dot here should match up to where all of my e-stitching starts, and it does. So I'm going to 
pin that. This dot here, this is where it gets tricky because they didn't want you to base this ahead of time. This dot here is going to match up with where this pocket edge ends, okay? So I'm not actually going to be doing a whole lot with this right now. I'm just gonna let it sit there and pin this to this outside edge. And remember, this is the edge that I went ahead and tied all of my knots on my gathering threads. Okay, so this is attached to it right there. I'm gonna flip it upside down. And on this side, I can pull my gathering threads and um, just kind of ease it all over. There is a notch here. I'm actually going to pin that notch real quick before it gets lost while I'm gathering things. Okay, so there's my, my notches matched up. I'm gonna go ahead and gather, scoot my gathers over and everything until this is all nice and flat. All right, so I have my gather stitches, I mean my gathering threads pulled, so this is fairly fitted here. And so still not worrying about this pocket, what I'm gonna do is come back, needle and thread, and I'm going to hand baste all of this area. Hang on a second, giving me fits here. I'm just gonna hand baste straight across this whole row here, basting down all of those gathering threads and everything so that I can pull the pins out because um, that'll make it easier for the next step. So just going to go straight across here Pull out pins as I go, and that's going to give me a chance to make sure that my uh, gathering is going to be well adjusted and not wanting to work itself out. So like right here, I can just go ahead and scoot a little bit over there and baste. You know, it's a lot easier this way than under the machine. Okay, so now I have this basted on, okay? So now this is the side over here. I'm going to try to fold my pocket so that it's going to lay flat up against all of that bastingness there and that this side is going to come back out. I need to carefully pin this in place and then come back and baste through all of these layers up here. Okay, so now I have this, which is, this is my yoke side obviously my pants, and these are the two layers of my pocket. Come back with my basting thread again, and actually I need to start it way over here at the edge um, until I get to this point where my pocket edge is ending. Just work that over. Lots of layers right there. All right, so at this point, I have everything basted on my front pieces, okay? My pocket is being held in place nicely. And if I open this up from the right side, it looks like it's going to match up pretty well, okay? So I'm gonna fold it back down, go over to my sewing machine, and sew straight across here at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so I have this sewed now, and I'm pressing my seam allowances up, okay? I'm trying not to press right here so I don't erase all of my little marks, but you know, if you do, you can redraw them. And now I'm gonna come back and top stitch right along here, um, just to, it's gonna give it extra strength, plus it'll hold this down nice and flat. So I have a seven inch zipper here that I'm gonna be using as my front opening zipper. Getting it used to opening and closing here. And there are so many different ways to put in a fly, but I am gonna try to follow the way that the instructions are giving us because that's sometimes a fun thing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put my right sides together. And remember we have all of these markings down here. So let me just go ahead and match up my notch right here. And I want to make sure that this seam line right there is exactly even. That's actually more important that that is even than um, the notch because that's going to be much more obvious, obviously. Okay, 
So now that that is there, this is my notch here. I'm going to put a pin at my notch and one like an inch or so below it. Okay, so the first thing they want us to do is stitch the front sections together at the center front, beginning at the large dot, which is this dot here. Okay, and the notch. And the notch is where my pin is, so that's only like a one inch little stretch there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is at a like 3 8 inch in. So from this dot here to my notch, which is right there, I'm going to go ahead and stitch that. All right, so I've got this little bit right there sewed together. Okay, so on this side, which is my left side, I need to, along this line here, that one that's at about 3 8 of an inch, I need to turn that in. Stick some clips on here just to make my life easier. Fold it on that line and I'm going to press it and I'm going to baste it down in place. So from this point here I'm just opening it up to where my stitching line is right here. Okay so I'm going to go over press this really quick and then I am going to machine baste it. I think that that's going to be fine so I'm going to press it and then machine baste this kind of like on the edge all the way down. All right so I have it stitched right down there. You know if I need to pull it out I can but it kind of blends in so I'm going to leave it. So what I need to do now is flip it over so it is right side up. Get my zipper and we're going to be putting the zipper in over here. So I'm going to use my double sided basting tape. Hang on a second. And if I unzip it, it's a little bit straighter up here at the top. And this is um, got a paper backing on one side, so I'm just pressing it down so that it'll lay nicely there. Cut my tape here and press it down one more time. This is water soluble. It won't goop up your needle. It's fabulous stuff. And now I can pull off that paper backing. Okay, so I'm just pulling off that paper backing and I'm going to set this down here. We want to place the zipper having the pressed edge close to the zipper teeth the zipper stop at the small dot. Okay, I'm just going to make it so that the edge of my tape lines up with the edge of my yoke top here and placing it so that the folded edge that I just did the edge stitching on is coming right up to the coils like this. Getting this side out of the way here and just pressing that down. All right, now that is done. Using a zipper foot stitch close to the pressed edge. Well, I'm basically going to be stitching it straight on top of my other row of stitching. Okay, so you can see I have this row of stitching. I'm basically going to sew straight on top of that. Let me pull this little thread off here. I've got a little a loop going on I don't need. So now that it's held in place with the tape and the tape is great because if you use a pin sometimes you end up with little bunches. So anyway I'm going to go ahead and stitch this right on top of my basting stitches that I just did. Okay so before I sew the other side of the zipper on I need to deal with my fly piece here and I need to interface it so I am going to use this which is called featherweight. It's like a midweight fusible interfacing. So I only have one of these pieces. I'm going to cut one of my interfacing and then I will make sure that I am fusing it on to the correct side. Okay. And so I will fuse it on and then um, this edge over here I need to finish off. So I'm just going to be surging along this edge. All right. So here it is. Okay, this is the fabric side. This is the interfacing side. And I am going to mark this little circle down here at the bottom 
on the interfacing side because I need to be able to see it this way. So I'm going to pin it up here. This dot that I just marked down here, it needs to match up with this dot, this dot down here. So if I stick a pin through there and through my dot on here and pull that flat, that should line up. Get that zipper tail out of my way. So this dot here I know is lined up correctly. So now I'm just going to pin this edge on here. Okay, the large dot is this one. Okay, this is my large dot. So that means this dot here is at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. All right, so apparently this fold line was only for the opposite side. For this side over here, I'm sewing this at a 5 8 inch. So this side was 3 8 this side is 5 8 So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this straight down to here. Okay, so I've got this stitched down to this dot at 5 8 inch in. Okay, I need to understitch this, so I'm pushing this over with the seam allowance underneath the fly. I'm going to understitch it over here on this side with a row of stitching coming straight down from here all the way down to where we stopped. So I'm going to put a little dot that I can see on this side so it's a little more obvious. Okay, all the way from here down to here, making sure I catch all of this seam allowance underneath it going that way. Okay, so now that this is understitched like that, I can just turn it and it's going to want to give me a nice edge here when I fold it. So this side is going to lay nice and flat. Now on the zipper over here, I am going to go ahead and put my tape on this side of my zipper really quick. I'm going to leave the paper on it for just a moment, but get this part on. Okay. Alright, so with my tape still on there for right now, what I need to do is lap this edge that I just folded over on top of the other side. I'm going to assume I'm at least overlapping it enough that it's going to cover my stitching. I want to make sure also that this seam down here is matching up. So I am probably overlapping by just about a quarter inch between here and here. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. Pin it carefully because I've got a lot of layers going on here. I don't even know if I can pin it. I'm just going to put a pin down here at the bottom maybe. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. Hang on a second. Let me go ahead and lap it all the way up to the top up here. So I've got that quarter inch overlap. I want to make sure that these top edges are even. Just put a clip up there. You see how many layers we're dealing with? It's a lot of layers to just baste through. But basting is exactly what they're going to want me to do. So let me just kind of stick this here for a second. I need to, with a needle and thread, very carefully hand baste this down at the edge from the top all the way down here. So here's the thing, going straight through basting it that way I think is going to give me trouble because like right here at this point there's like 15 layers of fabric in a zipper right here. So I'm going to kind of baste it by whip stitching. Okay, so I've got my blue thread and I'm just going to kind of catch the sides. What I'm trying to do is hold this whole edge in place where I want it to ultimately end up so that when I sew down the other side of my zipper I can guarantee that it's going to stay that way. So you know I'm kind of doing this thing all the way up to this point and then I'll just back stitch it to tie it off up here. Okay so I have that done you know 
all the way to the top. I went to the ironing board and just really lightly, lightly ironed it just to kind of set that crease in just a bit. I didn't want to iron it too much that I would erase my lines, but did that. So now I need to turn it back to the right, the wrong side up and just let this little piece stick out, okay? And so what I'm going to need to do now is pull my sticky paper um, off the back of my basting tape here. Okay. Oops, it wants to attach right here. Don't do that. All right. So now that that is off, I'm going to flap it back over, starting at the bottom here. Stick my zipper on there. Straighten this top part out a bit. And I need to stitch this on there, hopefully by machine. What does it say? Yes. Okay, so with this part just sticking out, it is not over its opposite side. I need to use my narrow foot or zipper foot or whatever and stitch down this edge on the zippers. There's a little guide line usually right there. I'm going to try to aim to stitch it straight down that line all the way from up here to down here. Okay, so I have done that. I need to iron it to erase that mark. I will in a moment. Stitched it all the way through here. Here's my stitches. They're just on the other side of this seam allowance. All right, so now I am going to put the whole thing right side down. Um, it says to unzip it, and the only way to do that is to take out my basting. So I'm assuming that the time for the basting is over. So let me just pull a little bit of this open here. I'm not going to take the whole thing right this second, just in case. All right, so I think I can open it enough here. All right, so we have a good look at it. That's good. So now that I've opened up the top just a little bit, what it says is to on this side with this fold here, unzipping it just a bit so I can get to it. I need to baste straight across this top edge up here to hold it closed and I'm going to do that with the machine just straight across here. Okay, so I did that at about a quarter inch seam allowance right there. Hang on camera. My camera's jiggling there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is zip it back up the rest of the way just so it holds nice and straight. Now I'm supposed to be sewing on my stitching line and I can see my stitching line here but I can't see it on the outside edge. So what I'm going to do is just put a couple little pins at strategic points so I can copy those dots over to the other side and then I can redraw them fairly easily. So I have those pins coming out. I know it's here, 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 and here. Okay. So I'm going to pull those out. Get my little ruler here. Because I do want to follow their stitching line. I think that it's there for a reason. I can see that it's at about five-eighths inch or so in from that outer edge. So there we go. I can see this dot through my fabric. It's right there. So I'm just going to redraw that stitching line, connecting my dots from here to here, here to here. And this one is going towards that point where everything came together. And that is where my stitching line goes to. Okay, so now I am remarked on the outside. Remarkable. I'm going to try to very carefully pin this so that my layers aren't going to want to separate. Okay, so I'm basically pinning that little underlap. You know what, I'm going to pull the rest of this basting out. It doesn't really need to be there at this point, I don't believe. Okay, so this can open up here. And put 
one more pin down here. Okay, so I am pinning, if you can't tell, I'm kind of pinning this layer here to my upper layer. And I'm going to be stitching from here all the way up to here. All right, so I have this stitched. I went ahead and ironed it to erase all my marks and pulled out my little basting threads. So now when I unzip it, I have a nice little fly here. I can close it, zip it back up. Yay, that's all good. I need to change the battery out on my camera and then we can proceed from here. Okay, so I just kind of pinned it up here on my dress form just to see what it looks like. Ah, I just pulled my basting out. I need to fix that. I will not manhandle it right now. But, you know, it's kind of a cute look. So now I just put this here to let it take care of itself for a minute and I need to start working on the back pieces. All right, the back is gonna go together so much easier than the front. It's gonna be amazing. But there's um, a couple things I need to do. I need to, you know, cut my notches. I am going to serge around each piece before I get started. So let me go ahead and clip my notches and serge it and I'll be right back. All right, so this is the center here. And up at the top of both of my back pieces, I need to run two sets of gathering stitches. These are my seam allowances. I'm gonna run my gathering stitches between those seam allowances, just like the front, one at 3 8 of an inch and one at half of an inch. Here to here on both sides. All right, so I need something to sew my yoke to. So I'm going to go ahead and clip my notches. The double notch is the center back, but sometimes that can be easy to miss. And because this piece looks very much the same on both sides, I'm putting a CB for center back right there and right here. Um, at the lower center back corner just so I can keep track of that. So I'm going to go ahead and serge around both of these pieces individually. Okay, so time to match up. So this is the center back here. All right, now when um, I was sewing in my gathering stitches, I'd like to pull my bobbin uh, threads because it's easier than pulling my needle threads but when you're using the same on both sides it can be tricky so I stuck my little pin on the needle side so I'm going to put a letter B for back and bobbin okay on here so I know that this is the side for my bobbin thread so I need to match up the center back of one of my pieces over here and over here at the end, and there's a notch here in the middle. And just like the front, pull to adjust those gathering stitches. And once I have them all pulled in and adjusted, I am going to hand baste this just like the front piece. All right, so I've got this basted on to one of my back pieces. And just like for the front one, I'm gonna stitch it at 5 8 and then press it so the seam allowance is up and then come back on this side and run a row of top stitching along this edge. And I'm going to do that for both of the back pieces. Good morning. So um, I am at the point where we left off and overnight um, I was just trying to think of what would make this project more fun. And, you know, it's a fun style and everything like that. But with the white canvas and everything, it's a blank canvas. And this is the same fabric I did with that little uh, elastic waist skirt that I painted the pockets. And I got to thinking, you know what, I'm going to paint the yoke on this. And um, years ago, I was in a painting uh, flowers phase. And... I got several of these Donna Dewberry books and I was using her methods and I painted barn doors and I painted walls and I painted archways. I, I was painting flowers on everything and it looked beautiful. And I say, you know what? I am going to do something very similar to that. My 
my grandmother, my father's mother, used to paint beautiful flowers on clothing. And I think I'm going to do something similar to that, um, more, more with leaves this time. So I want to walk you through the process of how I'm going to actually do that. So this is a little diversion off just straight sewing while the pieces are in, you know, separate separate pieces where I can get them nice and flat, this is the good time to do the painting. So I'm going to tip the camera out and let you into my process. So this is the pattern I've drawn for my back yoke. And I'm going to do the one for the front yoke right now so you can see. But this is what I'm coming up with. It's on tracing paper, you know, and it's just a, a line drawing. You can use a pencil or ink or whatever. But first thing I'm going to do is get my pattern piece Okay, put it down here, get a piece of tracing paper, and I'm going to tape that down, find my tape, so it won't go anywhere here. Next, I need to outline the outside shape of my pattern, as it is. And then I need to uh, draw in where my seam allowances are. So I'm just getting my ruler. It doesn't have to be exact, but I'm just giving myself a boundary so that I know where to center my design. So I'm just kind of drawing these lines at where 5 eighths of an inch is. And this center, even though it's a smaller seam allowance because of that funky 3 eighths inch one, I'm going to mark that at 5 eighths also. Okay, so now I have like my general outline. So I can lift this up and take the pattern piece out of here. Set that aside. And then what I need is a picture that I want to use as a guide. And... Um, Get it wherever you need to. I'm going to use one from her book, but I've also like just put a picture on my uh, Chromebook screen or something, put my tracing paper on top and trace that or whatever you have. I am going to use this picture from her book on page 41 of her book. And so then I can just place my tracing paper on top and see how I can make it fit. So this pattern here pretty well fits in my yoke, okay? There's a couple little leaves that go off, but I just won't draw those on. So now what I'm going to do is just put one little piece of tape just to kind of hold this in place because I don't want to rip my book when I pull my tape off. And just go through and start roughly tracing the pattern. Like this is a little flower little center. This is a ribbon. That's the bow. And just kind of take my time drawing it out like that. All right, so I've got it traced off to the size that I need for my yoke piece. And it's like this. So now I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, cut out on the outside edge both of my little patterns so that I can transfer these over onto my fabric. So somewhere in my room is a whole pad of carbon paper, brand new carbon paper, which is getting harder to find, by the way. And what I used to do is get my little pattern, stick a piece of carbon paper under it. And if you can find one, you know, I highly recommend put my piece on top and then just with a very sharp pen or something, draw, redraw over my pattern and it would trace that image with the carbon paper on here. But I can't find it. So I'm doing plan B, which is my makeshift light box, okay? Which is a clear thing here, a little light. This is one of these, it's got a magnet on it. It's actually supposed to be for putting a sewing machine light onto an old machine that does not have one. Because of the magnet, you can just clip it on and voila, light. And I have several machines with no light, so that's what this is. I'm not going to shine it in your face because that's a little bright. But I'm going to put this under my box, okay, like this, and place my pants on top. And I'm just taping the top edges of my 
garment to the top edges of my pattern. And if I don't do this exactly perfect, that's okay because I don't want my two sides to necessarily be 100% identical because then it looks like, you know, factory made and this is not. So here I am like this. I'm going to turn my light back on. Now I acknowledge that you probably cannot see the drawing through here. I can barely see it. Uh, knowing what I know now, I probably would have drawn my design on my tissue paper with a black Sharpie marker because that would be a lot bolder, okay? But I can see enough and I can lift up and down that I can kind of make it work. So what I'll do is just take my little pencil and come on here and just trace over it so I can get an idea of what this design is supposed to be. So I'm just going to do this all the way across. Actually, I could not see it well enough, so I am just, I couldn't find a black marker that was thin enough, so I just got my little blue Sharpie I'm putting this on. And now, just with that traced a little bit more, get my little drawing back on here, because I was kind of improvising as I went here. All right, so now you can see, you can see a whole lot better that way, so now I can trace it out a little bit easier. Okay, so I think I have all my tracing done now. Um, three of them I traced with a pencil. My last one here I traced with my heat erasable pen. So, you know, we get a couple options to see what works well. And the paint that I'm going to be using is just regular craft, um, craft store acrylic paint. That seems to hold up extremely well in the wash and everything. So let me go pick out a few colors. Okay, so, you know, don't judge my painting skills because this is truly just for fun. And I am just kind of going with the flow here. So one thing it seems to be is that if my paint is rather watery, it'll work better on this fabric if it's um, not very, if it's very thick. Look at me, I already have paint all over myself. Um, it's going to just hit the very top of the weave and I want to kind of saturate it. So like if I get a scrap here, you can see this is a fairly watery one and it's going to want to, for the most part, sink in. But it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just for, you know, it's just for effect. So anyhow, let me wipe this paint off my hand so I don't smear that all over the place because I'm already making a mess here. And I'm just going to get started. So I'll let the camera roll, but you know, I am not a painter. I do not teach painting. I am just kind of playing it as I go. This is one of my back yokes, you know. Start out in the back, because I can learn and make my mistakes back there, and hopefully people won't notice it as much as in the front. So I'm just kind of, you know, taking my time, playing with whatever color I want. Nothing too drastic, but you know, sometimes you just want to add a little something special to make, to make it unique, you know? And, uh, I kind of like the idea that carrying on the floral tradition, you know, that my grandmother used to do, she used to paint more flowers, um, just like garlands of flowers around dresses, you know, and it's, she, she's from Mexico and, you know, there's so many beautiful flowers down there. And so, you know, it just adds a little something special. So maybe, maybe I will try to do more flowers in a, a dress similar to hers at some point, you know, just to show what that was like. Alrighty, so I have my pants painted up and I think they are dry enough now that I can continue sewing. So what I need to do is sew the fronts to the backs at this inner leg seam. So I'm just going to match up this back here to this front and just pin it together and sew it with a 5 8 inch seam allowance straight down. 
I might back it up a couple times here just to reinforce it and then press the seam open. We do that on this side and this side. All right, so this is that seam I just did and I have my two layers just pressed on top of themselves here. Here's my front, here's my back. So what I need to do is match these up. I wanna make sure my little yoke seam is exactly matched up. And down here, of course, make sure that is matched up. Now, when we we're putting in the fly zipper, remember it had a stitch about an inch or so down from there. And so that's the point that I'm gonna match up to is where this little seam is. So I'm gonna match this up now. Um, it wants you to sew it and then come back and sew it again a quarter inch in, which is good. Um, it gives you, you know, an extra sense of purpose. What I am actually going to do is a little bit even more than that. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and stitch it once at five eighths. Do it again right on top of it. If you have a machine that does a, a multi uh, level or a where it'll go over itself, it's usually one of the uh, stretch stitches. Um, I would do that, especially down here in the curve. Okay. So I'm going to go at it five eighths, then come back. And at this point to this point, I'm going to do it again on the same type, same row of stitching and then come in a quarter inch in and do another one. So I'll have three rows of stitching here and two up here. And I'm going to blend it, the outermost one into this seam right here. Okay. So I sewed it. Remember I said I was going to try to match up to that little thing. Well, when I did, it didn't look right. This was at like that narrow three eighths inch seam allowance. And so if you just stitch to that, when you open it up, it's not going to fold right. So I came back and redid it at five eighths up as high as I can go. You can't get all the way cause you're in this funky little area here, but just get up as high as you can go. And then that's going to give the right line right here. Okay. So, um, what, that's what I've done. And so now what the pattern wants you to do is come back and trim between the notches down here. Okay. And, um, you can see, I hope that I have my extra row of stitching here and here. So I'm actually going to use my pinking shears and I'm just trimming down where the extreme part is. And this is just so that crotch area will be more comfortable and want to open up a little bit more because you know, we don't want to be uncomfortable down there. So I'm just trimming off a little bit. I'm not getting close to that second row of stitching, but it's going to make it so that it's more flexible. Okay. So now that that is done, I need to come over here and do my side seams. So let me just open this back up flat again. Okay. So now I'm going to match up my sides. I want to make sure that my little yoke seam here is matched up exactly. And the very top is, and um, these were slightly on a bias on the side here. And so if it looks like one of them is stretched out a little bit, you know, it's on a bias so we can make it work. Just kind of tug and it'll all work itself out. There is a notch there that can be matched up. Then coming down where the pocket is, remember that dot there, is pointing out where the um, edge of the pocket is actually becoming exposed on the inside here. So there is a notch in there. I'm kind of ignoring it right now, but if you're having trouble matching everything up, you can. And then I want to make sure that down at the very bottom, my edges are matched up. When I cut out my pattern pieces, I actually have these cut sideways on my canvas so that my bottom edge is the selvage edge. So if you're wondering what that is all about and why I didn't serge it, that is it. I cut it sideways, but you know, this is a nice sturdy canvas, so that's not a big problem. So now I'm going to go ahead 
sew these side seams at 5 8 7 inch and then I'm going to be pressing these seams towards the back because this pocket is so thick I'm not going to want to press it open I'll be pressing it towards the back okay so here they are so far you know and at this point I'm able to try them on and I can see that the length is good I'm going to have room for like a one inch hem which is good up here is bigger than what I need but remember it said there's ease built in up here that I did not put ease stitching in I can go back and put it in now if I feel like I need to when it comes time to put on the waistband but that's you know supposed to be eased into a waistband so I'm good with that so what I'm going to do is go ahead and get started with that whole process and there are carriers for a belt for belt loops on this pattern so I'm going to work on that I think that um, what they want you to do with this is to manually fold it and then fold it again okay they want you to fold it in like a quarter inch on each side and then fold it in half okay instead of that I'm going to run this little strip through my bias tape maker okay so if you have never seen a bias tape maker before this is it just this little folding device and it well I'll show you what it does you feed a strip of fabric through and it folds in each side so I'm just going to push my little piece of fabric through and it's going to come out this side all folded up and then I can just put my iron over here and iron it so let's see and as I pull it down ooh, steam just like that and it folds in both sides for me really nicely so now that I have it folded the two sides folded in half like that now it's really easy just to fold this piece in half and go ahead and sew it that way so I'm just going to fold it so both sides are matching and give it one more press and then when I go to my sewing machine I'm going to top stitch this on both sides of it so I have a row of stitching coming up here and over here okay so now I am supposed to take my little carrier thing that I made here and cut it into five three inch long sections so looks like they give us an extra inch that's exciting whoops wrong scissors so I'm just going to cut these and I already have my two rows of stitching on there so they are ready to go so the next thing I need to work on is my um, waistband hang on a second to cinch that up okay it's my waistband and they give you instructions to cut one of these out and interfacing I am going to be using my waistband interfacing this one it's like a mid-weight and what's kind of nice about these is that they're already perforated up at the top where that fold line is going to be and for this one in particular see if I put it right here I think you can see where these dots are is where the seam is supposed to be so if I line it up I can see that where my perforations are here is lining up so this is a standard size waistband so this will actually work perfectly for it so it is fusible so before I actually put any of these markings on I'm going to cut a length of this and uh, go ahead and fuse it on and then I'll come back and transfer all of my markings okay so now I have my interfacing fused on and I have put my pattern just back on top so there's a whole lot of things to mark on here everywhere there's a double set of big circles that is for the belt loop carriers I'm going to mark all of those in red so I can oh my red's about empty here I need to put a new ink inside now my looks like I have a carrier right exactly in the center back also so I'm going to draw a line up there the um, placement for center front center back and sides they all have a bottom and a top okay so I'm going to put this so like this will be a side marker 
my center back, even though it has a belt loop, you know, I put a top and a bottom down there. These right here are center front, okay? This is where a button is supposed to go. So I'll just remember that that is a button. I'll just connect them, okay? So now I have down here, I need to mark this side seam. And over here at this point is center front and this is a button and the button gets an X in my book. So I'm gonna put an X there. That means button for me. So now for my big placements, I like to draw a straight line through. It just makes it a lot more obvious. So that's front, that is side. back and side and front. Okay, so actually the next thing it wants me to do is fold under one end of all of my little carrier loop things at 5 8 of an inch and just press them. So I just drew a line at that point. I'm going to go over to my ironing board fold it at that point and just press them so I have it creased just like that. And you know what I'm going to do? I am going to actually put a tiny little piece of stitch witchery in here so that when I press it it's going to want to hold because this is so thick it's just going to want to pop back up. So now they are all pressed in and because I put that little stitch witchery it's going to stay put really well. So that's what I want. So each one of these is going to be sewed on where I have my big double circles. On the picture they're sewing through the dot so that dot is at 5 8 so it's at 5 8 so I'm just going to line up the bottom edge of my little carriers here with the edge of my fabric and then when I'm stitching it I'm going to try to make sure I stitch it at that 5 8 point straight across for each one so I should have five little loops on when I'm done. So I've got these sewed on and the top is just kind of hanging out there okay on the sides both sides I need to fold it in half at that center fold line which is the perforated part here and then fold back up the side that is not sewn on to these little carriers. Put a clip here and I need to stitch it right along there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Fold it in half in that center point. Fold this up here and sew it right here at 5 8 inch also. So for cutting the ends I cut that first layer at about an eighth of an inch. The next one at about a quarter inch and then come in fairly close to that edge just to take all that bulk out. Now the other thing is this part that is folded under, well for most of the ways I didn't actually fold it the rest of the way. I need to do that but um, I'm going to just kind of pink the edge of that and I am doing it like this, you know. So I'm bas basically just taking off the very top edge of it. Just to make, clean it up a little bit because this fabric is thin enough there is the odd chance that the seam allowance might be visible from the outside. I don't know if it will or not because of all the interfacing but this will help to disguise any um, drop off or anything from the seam allowances. So by pinking this one side at this level and then I will trim the other side at a different level, I'm not going to get a nice a big bulky edge. So what I mean by that is um, like say this was folded in and this was folded in this way and this was folded in this way. So all of those edges were ending right here, you know. It would be a whole lot thicker here than up here and it might might make it a little bit untidy. You know by pinking one of the edges here and the other one I'll pink in right at this level um, it's going to smooth it all out. It would be a lot easier to do that right now and I think I will. But what that means is when I go to sew it on I'm going to need to remember that I did that so I can stagger the placement of it. Okay 
So I'm just going to pink this one. Oh, it's hard going over those carriers. Clip over the carriers, pink in between, and I will be right back. Okay, so I have just turned this right side out of the corners. And what I need to do is press this. And I'm kind of sad because I think I'm going to erase most of my marks. When I do that, I will try to retain at least my side marks here. And my center back is going to be marked because I have a belt loop there. And so I just might have to, to redo one of the front ones, but that's not bad. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, press the top, press this side, press this seam allowance up so that this one is folded under so it'll look like this when I'm all done with just that pinking edge showing here. Okay, so I have my waistband all pressed. I ended up going back and just putting marks where my side seams and my center back were. It's pretty easy to tell where that was because my belt loops were placed and I could use those as a guide. So anyhow, what I want to do is go ahead and get started pinning my waistband onto my pants. I'm going to start by matching up my center back, which is right in the middle of this back belt loop. Now, my pants up here is at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Since I trimmed this one, I'm going to put it down just a little bit. It's kind of like grading it before you sew it, you know, but it works for me. i got to unzip my pants. That will make it easier. And then I can match up my side seam placement with my side seam here. Okay, so that's the red line there is my side seam. And so I'm going to put that right here and clip it. And then in the very front, of course, the edge goes with the edge. I put the edge of my waistband just a fraction, like a millimeter longer than of my pants so that there's room for it to wrap around. Put a couple little clips to hold that in place. Now, if they remember they wanted, they wanted us to put e-stitching in here, and I said, I don't think I really need it. This is why. If there is just a little bit of ease in this part, um, it looks like it's not that much. So again, and you've probably seen this hundreds of times by now, but if I'm holding something like this, the side that looks like it's a little bit bigger, I put that on the outside and bend it. Okay? So wherever, remember I'm pinning it slightly lower. So when I, you bend it, it's going to take that little extra and work it in. So right here, I'm going to bend it and pin right here. Okay? And so it's just going to work it in. So when I sew it, I'm going to sew it, opening up this edge, of course, like this. So this is on top, the feed dogs are on the bottom, and if there is any easing to do, the feed dogs can do that. But in general, I think it's going to even itself out really, really well. Okay, so I've got it sewed on. I want to show you something. When you start out, make a note of, make a note of where your stitching is, right here in relation to the top of your zipper. Okay, I had like about an eighth of an inch between the metal top of my zipper and where my stitching is. And then you can make sure when you come all the way around, just, I've got a little nest here, just ignore that, that when you finish up, your stitching is the same difference between the top of your zipper and where your stitching is. And that way when, hopefully, now that I say this, hopefully when you get it all done and you flip it up, that those two edges are going to be in line. That's what we want, okay? I can tell right now that is super thick right there. So what I'm going to do is open this up again. And I got a lot of thickness right here. I'm actually going to trim a little bit of this off because it is just not going to want to sit flat for me there. Um, I think that should be okay though. So I'm going to wrap this around. Remember I placed my edge of my 
waistband just like one millimeter out farther than the other edge because if you if you place it at the same level and then you go to pull everything under it has a tendency to kind of want to bunch it in like that but when it's just a little bit longer you got plenty of room to wrap it around with everything being nice and flat out here okay so with that done let me just stick a pen right here to hold that I need to come around and tuck in this whole seam allowance up okay and press it up like that so I can have a nice edge so at this point this is what it looks like on the outside okay and I have just folded it over on the inside and pressed it and I think what I'm going to do is actually come back needle and thread and just whip stitch this edge down so when I'm doing it I'm just coming down here in my seam allowance where you know I've got so much thickness and my fabric is fairly thick so it's not going to show from the outside on second thought after I got started I am going to stitch in the ditch and the reason why is because I completely forgot with this pre-folded inner facing fabulous stuff but one side is longer than the other and it's made so that you can easily do a stitch in the ditch or something so when it's folded over this side folds over by more than an eighth of an inch about the other one okay so when I'm just going to go whip stitch it it's actually catching stitches right about here and that's not pretty especially on fabric this thin okay so I'm just going to go ahead and do a stitch in the ditch which means sewing it looking at the right side but sewing straight down this little crevice right here where that seam is all the way down now if you're going to do this and you're worried that this is going to be moving put some stitch witchery in there so it'll hold it where you want it to go so that then when you go to stitch it this way it'll 100% be where you need it to be so I'm using my little stitch in the ditch foot that has the little blade to guide it and what I wanted to show you is if you're going to do this when you get to the point where your belt loops are pull them down and that gives you a much straighter little track to follow plus it stitches them in one more time so I can just follow it then straight across until I get to the very edge up here okay so now I am coming back down the top and I'm edge stitching here so when I get to where my belt loop goes I'm just going to flip it up so that the top or fold edge of my belt loop is in line with that top and when I get to it I'm just going to stitch straight over it and just keep on going down the side adjust this here keep going till I get to the next belt loop area fold this up so it's in line and keep going straight over it just like that so what I need to do now is put a button on my pants up here in the waistband okay I just transferred that mark over from the pattern so I'm over here on my 15, my Singer 15, which is where my buttonholer lives. And this is very thick up here, so it's going to be a, a chore to get this under here. Hang on, let me use two hands for a minute. All right, so if I can get my needle to where it needs to start, and I think that's about it right there, and make sure that this line here is going straight down the center, I should be able to get going. This is a very thick amount of things under here, so we're going to hope for the best right now. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to call that good, pull it out, and then I can clip it open. Ugh, so tight underneath there, but you can see, well, maybe you can't see. There, you can see it makes a nice oval, so you can see better once I clip it. So I'm going to clip this off and go uh, open up my buttonhole. 
Okay, so now I'm just going to, with my little chisel here, cut through, oh, come on, there's so many layers in there, cut through all of this canvas. And I think I need to cut it a little bit more. This is a very thick, 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 thick um, amount of fabric here. Can you see that? That's a lot of fabric. Um, I'm probably going to change. I was going to use a regular little flat button, but I'm going to change it to a shank button just so that there's enough space that it'll fit through all of that. But before I do that, I'm going to try to clean some of this extra out. There's a, a whole lot of little threads that, given the chance, will get in my way. So I'm just going to trim those off and then try to pull some of the whiskers off here to make that a little bit cleaner. So give me one second here. Okay, so now that I have my buttonhole all open and clean, what I need to do is mark where I need to put my button. So it's gonna be way over on this side of the buttonhole and just straight down. I'm gonna make a little red dot, which is gonna be right here, okay? So let me open this up. I'm going to use just this little kind of square-ish shank button and sew it right there. So to sew on this button, I am going to use my, oh dear, I just pulled the end off of my needle threader. Someone needs to make a decent needle threader. You know, I've got like five different styles, but they all seem fairly disposable at this point. Anyhow. I'm doing the loop start method, I believe it's called, where you pull the two tails through the eye of the needle. And let me get my thimble here. I'm going to go straight down, come back up before I've pulled it the entire way. And then I can put my end of my thread through that little loop. And that is my knot to get started. So I'm just going to go ahead, sew my button on. Since my thread is doubled and waxed and everything, it should be fairly strong. And uh, tie it off and then we're going to start working on the hem. So for the hem down here, it's going to be very basic. Since I did cut my pants so that the edge is surged, I don't need to double it under. So I am just going to fold it up about an inch, which is going to take it past the selvage edge particular kind of weave. Pin it up, press it, and I am just going to run a row of machine stitching right along there just to hold it up. And that should be it. <laughs> These are my pants and um, I like them. I can tell you a couple things. One, the adjustment that I made for my crotch depth for these pants is perfect. So in general, if you have to make an adjustment for another style of pants, carry it over to this one. It stays true to that same ratio. Um, I did cut off, what was it? Five or six inches from the bottom and hemmed it up an inch. 
and it's still, you know, extremely floor length for me. I am around 5'4", so, you know, that gives you an idea. But yeah, it's comfy. Um, kind of spring-ish in my fabric choice, but I like that. I think I could make it in a slightly heavier fabric if I wanted to. You know, I could do it in corduroy or something. But um, because the gathering that's on it is not so tight that it would be an extreme poochiness. It's a, it's a looser gather than I thought it was going to be. Um, but it's comfortable. So I hope you liked it. Kind of a fun little pant pattern. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>